You think you know Millis? Think again. Today we're diving deep into Arduino's most misunderstood function and uncover its brilliant deception. Anytime during operation you can ask your Arduino, hey buddy, how long have you been running? And it tells you down to the millisecond. It feels like magic. How does it know how much time actually passed? Like any good magic trick, there's some clever deception happening. First, let's talk about hardware timers. Think of them like your heartbeat. You don't cautiously tell your heart to beat, it just happens in the background, while you focus on other things. And that's what hardware timers do for your microcontroller. They count without the CPU having to think about it. It's like having a personal assistant who counts seconds while you're busy doing important stuff. Like turning on and off a light, we've all been there. In the case of millis, timer zero is used. It is driven by a clock source. This clock source is the external crystal that is connected to the microcontroller. It oscillates with a frequency of 16 megahertz. That's 16 million times per second. Now, 16 megahertz is way too fast for our timing needs, so Timer Zero uses a prescaler. This brings our frequency down to a more manageable 250 kilohertz. Timer Zero increments by one every four microseconds. Here is where it gets interesting. You'd think Arduino would set up timer zero to trigger an interrupt every 250 counts, which would be exactly one milliseconds, right? Nope. Instead, timer zero counts all the way up to 255 overflows back to zero and then triggers the interrupt. This means each tick actually takes 1.024 milliseconds, not one millisecond. So is millis a lie? Well, not exactly. The Arduino team came up with a brilliant solution. In a timer zero overflow interrupt service routine, they do some fractional math. They keep track of the fractional parts of milliseconds and add an extra millisecond whenever these fractions accumulate to a whole millisecond. But why are they doing this? ATmega328P only has three hardware timers. Every timer can be used for two pulse width modulated pins also known as analog write pins. So in total we have six pins that support pulse width modulation. However, if we would use timer zero in CTC mode, which stands for clear timer on compare match, when it reaches the value of 250, we would lose at least one of these pins and the remaining analog write pin on timer zero would lose some accuracy. This is our interrupt service routine of timer zero and we have two variables timer zero millis and timer zero fract and then we increment the timer zero millis if we run on 16 megahertz this is one if we reach the fractal maximum we reset it and then we add another one millisecond to the millis counter so the maximum error is two milliseconds let me show you a diagram to make it clearer I will put the link to this diagram somewhere here. Here I compare the real time with the reported time. Millis of course starts at zero and after a little bit more than one millisecond it jumps up to a value of one. And then after a little bit more than another millisecond it jumps to a value of two. And as you see it slowly creeps away from the ideal time. And this is also represented by this error here. The error increases from zero to minus one and then not exactly zero to a little bit below minus one. And so we creep away and if we increase the time range, you see that this error gets more and more until we reach two milliseconds and then we jump back to where we belong. It jumps from minus two milliseconds error to zero milliseconds error. So if we set the initial value of this variable to one, the error should be plus minus one milliseconds, which would be much better in my opinion. It reminds me of my video about ADC accuracy and how I did it wrong in the past. So definitely check out this one if you're interested. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments.
I think for most applications of milis, this will be completely irrelevant. But there is one thing that you need to keep in mind. Never ever check if milis is an exact value. Always check if it's bigger or smaller than something. Or add an equal if you want. Because your value might be a value that will never be reached. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. Also push the notification bell because subscribing without pushing the bell is like calling millis but never checking the value. And if you're curious why millis might crash your Arduino after running fine for weeks, click here to find out. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.